MASH was a classic TV series that brought us laughter, tears, and a whole lot of bloopers. Set during the Korean War, the show follows the antics of the Mobile Army Surgical Hospital and its zany cast of characters. But behind the scenes, there were plenty of mistakes, anachronisms, and continuity errors that most people didn't notice. Facts First presents This Photo Is Not Edited. Look closer at the MASH bloopers. Time Traveling Comic Book As you probably know, Radar has a genuine love for comic books, and his collection boasts issues from the 60s and 70s. He's particularly fond of the time-traveling Fantastic Four and has been known to geek out over their adventures with his buddies. In this scene, featured in the Season 1 episode Tuttle, he was spotted relaxing with a copy of Captain Savage and his Battlefield Rangers No. 10, originally released in 1969. MacArthur's Inaccurate Representation Throughout the iconic series, Douglas MacArthur is consistently depicted as if he still holds command over the U.S. forces in Korea. Despite the fact that he was relieved of his duties by President Truman approximately 10 months into the war on April 11, 1951. On your mark, get set, no. In the season 6 episode titled MASH Olympics, Potter uses a Smith & Wesson Model 19 snub-nosed pistol to begin the crutch race, despite the fact that this model was not produced until the late 50s. Mickey Mashup In one memorable scene in the episode The Colonel's House, which was set in Colonel Potter's office, Potter is heard spelling out BJ's father-in-law's name on the telephone. Nearby, Hawkeye, who was within earshot, responds to Potter's spelling by chanting M-O-U-S-E, which is part of the famed theme song for the Mickey Mouse Club show. But the Mickey Mouse Club didn't make its debut on TV until October 3, 1955, more than two years after the war ended in Korea. More comic book shenanigans In a fourth season episode of the series Der Tag, which was aired in the U.S. for the first time on January 6, 1976, Radar is shown snuggled up with his beloved teddy bear and a copy of The Avengers. But that comic was not introduced until 1963, and the cover features the Black Panther, who was not created by Jack Kirby until 1966. In the Novocaine Mutiny episode, additional items from Radar's collection are revealed, such as more issues of The Avengers and Spider-Man, both of which were created in the 60s. Cookie Confusion Later on in that same episode, BJ displays a package of Fig Newtons seen in the clear plastic packaging used in the 1970s. But in 1950, the cookies would have been packaged in the box shown in this image. Duke to the Future During Season 5, Episode 22, titled Movie Tonight, the members of the 4077th gather in a tent to watch the classic 1946 Henry Fonda film My Darling Clementine which is an appropriate choice for the time period. But Radar stands up and entertains the group with his impression of John Wayne, uttering the famous line, I'm not gonna hit ya, I'm not gonna hit ya, like hell I'm not, in his best attempt at the Duke's signature drawl. Unfortunately, Radar's quote is a paraphrase from a scene in McClintock, which wasn't released until 1963. This further fuels speculation that Radar very well just might be a time traveler. Time Traveling on Thin Ice In the seventh season episode, Baby, It's Cold Outside, the group assembles to watch the 1941 film Sun Valley Serenade, which is an ice capade flick featuring Norwegian figure skater and film star Sonia Henney. Colonel Potter points out a scene where Henney is expected to perform a triple axel and end up in a split, but it should be noted that Midori Ito was the first woman to successfully execute a triple axel in 1988. Furthermore, Carol Heiss was the first woman to perform a double axle in 1953. The Perplexing Pinball Machine During the sixth episode of Season 10, Wheelers and Dealers, there's another instance of an item that does not align with the show's timeline. Specifically, the Officers Club features various forms of entertainment and facilities, such as the pinball game Spot a Card. However, this machine was not manufactured until August of 1960 by manufacturer Gottlieb, which is after the Korean War ended. A Monster Mistake In the Season 3 episode Springtime from 1974, 
There's further indication that the MASH cast might have had access to Marty McFly's DeLorean. Radar once again slips up when he comments that the movie for the night is the firstborn of Godzilla, but it's worth noting the massive monster didn't make its first appearance until the 1954 film Godzilla, directed by Ishiro Honda. The Blob Blooper, Season 2, Episode 18, titled Operation Noselift, includes references to additional classic monster movies in the presence of Radar. During the episode's opening scene, Henry Blake mentions The Blob, which was released in September 1958. Military Mistakes The Season 2 episode for The Good of the Outfit is a classic episode that raises significant questions about the show's writing beyond just the pop culture errors. There are also military anachronisms present such as a model Bell Huey UH-1 helicopter seen hanging from the ceiling in Henry Blake's office. This helicopter didn't take its first flight until 1956 and is primarily associated with the Vietnam War, making its appearance in a Korean War era setting anachronistic. Sing Me a Song In the 61st episode of the series, Mad Dogs and Servicemen, which aired in 1974, Radar is depicted as being bedridden, potentially with a rare, albeit incredibly dangerous, case of rabies. To cheer him up, Margaret reads him a letter that mentions two popular songs, Diddy Wah Diddy by Bo Diddley and The Wayward Wind by Goji Grant. But both these catchy songs were released in 1956, several years after the Korean War ended. Questionable hairdos As the show progressed, it became apparent most of the main characters weren't adhering to the U.S. Army's haircut regulation for the 50s. However, the ever-dignified Colonel Potter, played by Harry Morgan, was a notable exception, exuding an air of authority and professionalism while rocking the appropriate haircut befitting of an officer in that era. Ahead of their time Put simply, the characters in M.A.S.H. often expressed social attitudes reflective of the time in which the show was made, rather than the early 50s when it was set. As the show progressed, it became more akin to a contemporary drama rather than a period piece. Nailed it! In defiance of army regulations and common sense, Margaret's nails in the series are a sight to behold. A nurse and by-the-book army officer, it's highly unlikely she would be permitted to maintain such long nails. The discrepancy between her appearance and what's expected only adds to her enigmatic character. By any other name, the show makes a few historically inaccurate references regarding governmental organizations, such as referring to the War Department instead of the Department of the Army, which was its renamed title since 1947. It would be more appropriate for the characters to use the correct terminology when discussing orders from Washington, D.C., such as referring to the Department of Defense. Let's do the time warp again. A time warp seems to have taken hold of the world and Colonel Potter's family in M.A.S.H. Initially, Potter's only child was a son, whose wife had a daughter. But as the series progressed, Potter suddenly had a grandson named Corey, who grew from a newborn to a five-year-old in the blink of an eye. And strangely, by the end of the series, Potter's child had become a daughter. Hawkeye's Ever-Changing Backstory Hawkeye's backstory is a bit of a roller coaster. At first, he hails from Vermont, with both parents being alive, a married sister who sends him a giant homemade sweater, and a nephew. But as the show progresses, we see a different side of him. Hawkeye now claims Crabapple Cove, Maine as his hometown, and he's an only child whose mother passed away when he was around 10. Now it's time to hear from you. Can you think of some other bloopers and mistakes that MASH had? Let us know in the comments section below.